Well, it's interesting. Uh, we didn't grow up with a television, for one. My dad was a believer that we read books and go outside and play and, and learn about the environment. And it probably was good for us. So it got us outside. We played a lot of sports, got very interactive. It probably led to my wildlife uh, appreciation. We lived out sort of near the woods. And so I was often out mm -hmm. traipsing in the hills and looking at birds and deer and that sort of thing. And it affected us later. So we didn't grow up uh, watching football. And so ultimately when I was drafted, my dad tells a funny story, you know, one of his colleagues calls up, you know, Dr. B, I heard, you know, Rolf was drafted. And there's a long pause on my dad's side of the phone. And he finally says, you know, drafted? I thought the war was over. They still drafting people. <laughs> right? So we had a lot to learn um, later on in life. Your father was an immigrant. Passing interest at best, I would think, in maybe soccer. And here you are with this love of all things athletic as well as academic. How do you square the two as a kid with a dad who's not necessarily interested in you running around with a ball? It was, it was really the environment. So Hanover, New Hampshire is a small little town completely centered around Dartmouth College. And so it was literally part of our curriculum. So growing up after school, we had ski lessons taught by our mothers. So Monday and Wednesday was, was downhill or skiing. It starts learning how to stem Christie and then parallel and then race. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, it was either jumping or cross country. And so that was part of our curriculum. And then learned to skate on the ponds, snuck into the Dark Dartmouth hockey rink to, to play hockey as we got older. Tennis was something we did. So, so we played the seasonal sports. And the irony that I'm playing football is that back there, uh, soccer and football are both played in the fall. And I was always a soccer player. But ultimately, my dad decides to move us to San Diego when I was 15, going into high school. And they had none of the sports that I grew up with, including soccer. So we started a soccer team my junior year in high school at La Jolla. But soccer out here is played in the winter. And so I ended up uh, playing. And then one crazy day after a soccer practice, a couple of guys in the football team, this is back when soccer style place kicking was becoming sort of the thing, came up and asked any of us if we'd ever kicked a, a soccer, a football. And three of us raised our hand, and I was one of them. And, Thinking, I'm not sure why I raised my hand, except as kids, walking home from grade school, we would walk across the Dartmouth athletic fields. And of course, we'd always kick on the goalposts. And so I raised my hand. And the next thing we know, we're having a kicking competition. And man, don't tell anybody, kicking isn't that hard if you kick a soccer ball. And what we didn't realize was the head football coach, the varsity football coach, was watching. And he came up to me afterwards and said, you know, we'd like for you to kick your senior year next year in high school. And I'm going, I don't think so. I'm 135 pounds, and I know back then you had to play two positions. And, and he said, no, no, we'll just have you kick. And that's sort of what led to, obviously, a career that very you know, fundamentally changed my life. You could make a big leap, though, from high school to the NFL, and there's a lot that happened <laughs> in between. So when you decide to, to kick your senior year in high school, are you thinking it's a novelty, that's the end of the road, were you thinking, I'd want to do this in college? You know, Mike, that's, I probably wasn't thinking any of that stuff. It was, I had great friends on the team, and they all thought it would be cool, and they sort of talked me into it, and we didn't have a very good team, and so we had a lot of chances to kick, and again, it wasn't that hard, and so it, we had some success at it, and then, you know, I was, I was given scholarship opportunities to go to San Diego State and, and, and USC and Cal and Stanford. And so I went to my dad and I go, Dad, you know, they, they want me to go to college and kick at Stanford. What do you think? And remember, we didn't have a TV, didn't know if I was good, didn't know much about it. And he goes, why would you go to school to kick football? Really? <laughs> and I go, yeah, you're right, Dad, but I'm, I'm not sure why I would. And by then I had really developed this passion for wildlife. Uh, my senior year in high school, my graduation gift, because of moving out here and my dad being involved with the zoo, was a chance to spend a summer in South Africa. Now this is crazy, I was 17, flew by myself to attend a wilderness leadership school with five other students for two and a half weeks in three game reserves in South Africa. We lived outside, walked the game reserves at night, slept out with a fire and a, and a local game guard and a game warden. And after that two and a half weeks, I lived in this same game reserve where they saved the white rhino. And I was involved where they were darting them, tranquilizing them, and relocating them back to their original breeding grounds. So 
That was my passion. So I chose UC Davis because they had a zoology department. So I didn't know if they had football. I didn't go there to play football. And I'm there for a week and I get a call from the head football coach. I go, who are you? Why are you calling? And he shares a crazy story about, well, the coach at USC, John Robinson, had just called him and said, you got to be doing something illegal. You must be paying players to come to Davis. And the Davis coach goes, what are you talking about? But why are you accusing me of that? And John Robinson said, we recruited this kicker and he chose Davis and he turned down Southern Cal. You got to be doing something illegal. <laughs> and the Davis coach goes, well, we didn't sign a kicker, but what's his name? And he tracked me down and he talked me into playing. And I played four years and had a great experience and, and ultimately. So you go to school with absolutely no intention of kicking at the college. It, it gets worse, college. actually, Mike. I'm there my freshman year, play, and then in the winter and spring, I sign up for intramural soccer. Our dorm team has a soccer team. I play co-ed. And pretty soon, I'm playing with most of the guys that are playing on the varsity team, and they're great guys, and I realize how much I miss the team aspects of soccer, and I realize I can hang with these guys. The problem is, in college, soccer and football are both in the same season. So I go back my sophomore year to my coach, my football coach, Jim Soker, and say, Coach, I'm going to go play soccer. I'm sorry, I'm quitting football. And he could have said, go ahead if you don't want to be a football player, but he didn't. He said, let me talk to the soccer coach. And together they worked it out, and I ended up playing both sports for the next three seasons, both in the fall, and had an unbelievable experience.